Under NFPA 72, a fire alarm control unit is required to have a primary and a secondary power supply. And in the real world, we do things a little bit differently in the lab. You wouldn't have the primary power supply coming in on a piece of SO cable like this, but you would have a branch circuit that would come out of an electrical distribution panel, which would be appropriately marked in that electrical panel, have a mechanical means to lock it, be indicated in red that it was for the fire alarm control, and that primary power comes into the transformer and the terminals on the motherboard to provide the principal source of power for the fire alarm. Due to the fact that this is an emergency life safety system, fire alarm panels have to have a secondary power supply. The most common source of secondary power supply for fire alarm control panels out in the normal building environment are rechargeable batteries that are adequately sized to carry the load. And in this case, batteries, when they're used, must carry the load for at least 24 hours on standby. And for a non-voice based system, cause the system in alarm under full load for at least five minutes. In a voice-based system, that five minutes is increased to 15 minutes. Um, some buildings out in the building environment, which have generation capabilities, a standby generator, we can reduce the size of our batteries to four hours instead of a 24-hour standby to recognize the fact that an emergency generator exists.